Okay, right. Uh, thank you for that. Hallelujah. Well, yeah, so we're talking about fathers. And um, so let's have a look at the traits of what a good father should be. Would that be a good idea? So the traits of a good father are these. I think the first thing that a good father should be is actually born again. All right. A good father should be born again. Um, and that is a great blessing for any father to be. But you know what? Not every father is born again. But you know what? These traits are still um, uh, important, even for somebody who's not born again yet. So uh, a good father should be loving. A good father should be intimate with their children. You know, Give them hugs and cuddles. Make them feel wanted. Um, a good father is a protector of his family. He's there to protect them if there's any danger. A good father is a provider for that family. He works to provide for that family. Hallelujah. And you know what? A good father is somebody who is peaceful. You know, so that the children can pick up that peacefulness. And he should be happy and joyful. Hallelujah. He should be happy and joyful. And nurturing. A good father should, is somebody who should be a nurturer of his children. To help them grow up in the right sort of way. That they might grow up with confidence. Giving them confidence. And of course, a good father. And you know what? When I say father, I'm putting in parenthesis as well, mother, because these are all important, um, is a role model. That father has to be a role model. You know, the children look to their parents to see how they should be. And so a good father is a role model good father should be able to teach his children manners and how to um, react in this world. He should be a teacher because children need to learn. And uh, where are they going to learn it from? If they're not learning it from their parents, then they're going to learn it from somewhere else. And you know what? They're learning it from somewhere else. It might not be the sort of things that you would want them to learn. So a parent and a father should be a good teacher. And the parents should be honest as well. They should be able to show their children what honesty means. And of course, um, a good father needs to be patient, always needs to be patient because um, my parents need to be very patient with me. And I'm sure we've all been a bit like that. Children, you know, they test their, their, their parents' patience but they need to be patient and kind and also forgiving. You know, sometimes we're naughty, but you know what? We may um, take a rap for that, but we also need that forgiveness. Hallelujah. And um, I think we, we need to be, as parents, fair to our children as well and to show them what justice is about. Um, and we need to show these things without hypocrisy. Uh, you know, I, I think there's many times when children look at their parents and say, well, you know, they're just hypocrites because they say I should do something, but I see them doing that same thing that they tell me not to do. So I think uh, good parents um, do things without hypocrisy. Hallelujah. And they should be tolerant as well tolerant and sympathetic you know sometimes when your your child um, falls over and cuts his knee or something you've got to be sympathetic and not just say well you shouldn't have done that you can't be too harsh so sympathy i think is a great thing 
but we also need to be able to discipline and correct our children. Because uh, the Bible tells us that we need to be able to correct our children in the proper way. Um, because children need guidance. So we have to be guides. We have to be able to give them advice, but also to be able to give that correction at the right time because it's for their own good. And sometimes it might mean a, a smack on the bottom, whatever is legal these days, I don't know. And I think uh, good parents should be humble as well. Humble, humble before God. And, you know, uh, to walk in humility in this world is a, a rare thing these days. Most people um, look at pride, but humility, is a wonderful thing from God and faithfulness as well. And we can look at the fruit of the spirit and we see self-control. You know what? Children need to see that their parents have self-control, that they should be law abiding and not rebellious. You know, we look at the world today and there's so many people rebellious, even older people just still in rebellion because they've never learnt to move on from that. Good habits. We want to instill good habits into our children. We want to show them a balanced life, not being at one extreme or another. We should be healthy. Show them how to, to live in good health, to exercise properly, to eat the right things. And um, we should be unprejudiced and non-judgmental that we should cheat, teach our children those things, that they might become unprejudiced and, and non-judgmental too. Um, and, you know, what we need to be consistent with the things that we say. And we should be a good listener because sometimes the children need to be listened to. And you know what? We're taking the children from a toddler right up to adulthood. And, um, and so it, it takes that full expanse of time. So we need to be a listener and a friend to them when they grow older. And we've always got to be there for them, no matter what. You know, that's what unconditional love is about, to always be there. And um, we should be willing to give our lives for our children to us. Because Jesus said, there is no greater love that a man or a woman can give that, than that he would lay down his life for his friends or his children. I'm trying to get over All right, we're trying to admit somebody. <clears throat> Welcome, good evening. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes, forgive us for, um, for our, our ineptitude, but we will get better, I promise you. Hallelujah. So, um, yeah, so those are some of the traits, I believe, that would be a good father, a good father. And um, I'm not saying that we can all be those things because, you know what, that is like the perfect father would be like that. And we're not perfect, but we do have a perfect father. Hallelujah. Amen. We've got a perfect father who is in Amen. heaven. Amen. But, you know, the thing is that a, a child becomes a reflection of their parents. A child becomes a reflection of their parents. What they see their parents do, they also tend to do, whether that be good things or bad things. Is that right? It is right. And you know what, in this society today, um, we are full of absentee fathers and single mothers who struggle to bring up their children. And, you know, God designed families to be a mother and a father so that they could bring up their children in the right way. But you know what, this type of behavior is creating dysfunctional families and of course we live in a fallen world so therefore uh, these things happen but um 
there are so many dysfunctional families around. And in fact, if you could tell me about a, a family that was not dysfunctional, I will tell you one that doesn't exist because every family is in some way dysfunctional, whether to a greater or a lesser extent. And that is because we're not perfect people. But you know what? When you get dysfunctional families, they produce dysfunctional children. And those children produce even more dysfunctional children. And they just continue doing that. And it becomes a vicious cycle, which, you know, and actually we can say, say in the world today, that vicious cycle has pretty much become an epidemic of dysfunctional children and families. And it needs to stop because dysfunctional families and children creates chaos in the world. And there's so many people getting hurt, they're getting abused. It leads to all types of unhealthy things, including death. But um, the whole point about this fallen world and the dysfunctional families is that um, it falls right into the hands of the devil because you know what? It's the devil's plan that through this type of chaos, he can destroy and control mankind. He wants to pervert the order of God's creation. He wants to stop the fulfillment of God's plan. And he wants to establish his kingdom of darkness forever. Yeah, that's right. He wants to do it forever. I know he's read the book of Revelation and he's trying to prevent that from happening. And the more chaos that he can produce in this world, you know what? The more time he gives himself, so he thinks. But praise God, you know what? We've got a God is in control. And no matter what the devil does, it ain't going to work. So what are we going to say? And we can say all this together. No way, Jose. Amen. No way, Jose. No way, Satan. And you know what? The only solution is the establishment of God's kingdom on the earth. Amen. And we say in the Lord's Prayer, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. And that's what we want to see. God's will done on this earth. Because that is the solution to this problem. And what is man's solution? Well, man's solution is to throw money at it. They think, well, you know, if we throw enough money at it, um, these things will get sorted out. Um, social care. It will put into social care. Now, I'm not saying these things are bad. But you know what? They can only go so far. Um, psychology, again, you know, it can be very helpful in many cases, but it can only go so far. You know, there are lots of good intentions out there, but you know what? The problem is people's hearts. Unless you can change a person's heart, how can you change their behavior? You can't just talk them into it. And you know what? The only one that can change a person's heart is the Lord himself. And at the moment, we've got an overwhelming wave of violence. We've got theft, rebellion, corruption, murder, suicide, cult practices, ungodly religions, ungodly life. It's all over the world. We see it every day. But praise God, the, there is a gospel. It's good news. It's good news. You know what? Because there is a father in heaven who can change and stop all this rot. And the rot needs to stop, doesn't it? Amen. And you know what? He can transform the worst cases of a dysfunctional person. And we've seen it. Murderers. Uh, 
terrible criminals, gangsters. You know what? They've come to know God and they've been able to change their ways because God has been able to change their heart. So it doesn't matter how bad and dysfunctional somebody is, if they will give their life to God, he can change it. You know why? It's because he's the perfect father. Hallelujah. And the scripture says that he is the father to the fatherless. You know, there's a whole generation out there without fathers come from single mothers, you know, who struggle. And you know what? I've met a couple of young guys who've been brought up um, by their mothers and they've been led astray. They've gone into gangs. But you know what? God's got hold of them and he's starting to transform them. And you know what? They're turning into beautiful individuals. Hallelujah. Because God has been able to get hold of them. It doesn't matter how far you've fallen. If you sincerely give yourself to the Lord, he will lift you. He will raise you up. Amen. Psalm 68, 5 says, he's a father to the fatherless and a defender of widows. Is God in his holy habitation? God sets the solitary in families. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Somebody who's alone and lost. You know what? If they cry out to God, he can place them in a family. He can place them in somewhere where they can start to, to thrive and to prosper. And he says, and he, he brings to those who are bound into prosperity. Hallelujah. Yeah. So if you've been bound, you give your life to God, he can bring you into prosperity. Can you mute again, please, Alan? Hallelujah. Senor Caxon. James 1.17 says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Hallelujah. And it comes down from the Father of lights. So those good gifts come down to earth from God, from God above, when we come to him in prayer. Thank you. From the Father of light, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. God is totally consistent. And when we, um, when we live and are obedient to his word, all the promises of God can come to us. Hallelujah. There's no variation or shadow of turning in the Lord. Wow. And Psalm 103.13 says, as a father pities, well, it, it actually means is concerned for his children. So the Lord is concerned for those who fear him. For he knows our frame and he remembers that we are dust. Hallelujah. You know what? He knows our weakness and yet he is sympathetic with it because he's the perfect father. Amen. So right now, I'm going to put on a little bit more music, hopefully. And, um, and we'll see you in a few minutes to finish the rest of this message. So bear with me. Hallelujah. And we're back. And uh, so it's part two. And um, praise the Lord. And thank you, everyone, for being here with us tonight. We love you. And, um, and we do apologize for our technical inferiority at this stage in life. But we're going to get better, okay? So part two, we're talking about fathers. And we're talking about... the issues of fatherhood, hallelujah. But we're celebrating fathers tonight because we can't do without them. You know what? We've all got a father somewhere, whether we know it or not. Uh, but whether we know our earthly father or not, 
we do have one who is in heaven hallelujah and he is the perfect father and if we've had bad fathering in our lives hallelujah you know what our perfect father above he's going to make everything right for us when we come to him sincerely so um i just want to come to a great scripture which is hebrews 4 15 it says for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. You know what? We've got a father who will help us in our time of need. And we look to the scripture before. He sympathizes with our weaknesses. Um, but you know what? This scripture is talking about Jesus. Hold on. But Jesus and the father. Well, you know what? Jesus and the father are one. Is that right? Jesus and the Father are one. In Isaiah 9, 7, it says, His name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Almighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. And Jesus said in John 10, 30, I and my Father are one. Hallelujah. So what is true of the Father is also true of Jesus. And um, in John 14, one of the disciples, Philip, comes to the Lord and says, Lord, show us the Father and it is sufficient for us. And Jesus says, to him, how long have I been, uh, sorry, have I been with you so long and you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe I am in the Father and the Father is in me? Wow. So what is true of, the, of Jesus is true of the Father. And you know what? When we see Jesus' ministry, it exhibits all the traits of our Heavenly Father. And, uh, you know, when he says, um, when you've seen me, we're talking spiritually, having seen him, and also in an earthly way, because Everything that he did spiritually, he did physically as well. And uh, Philip was a witness of that. But in Jesus' ministry, we see how the perfect father operates. And Hebrews 13.8 says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. He's the eternal father too. He is the prince of peace. He's the good shepherd that we see in Psalm 23. He's the one that guides us. Um, he, he, he guides us and protects us throughout our life when we give our lives to him. Amen. He takes us through every stage and trouble that we might go through. And you know what? He leads us to places where we can rest in peace by still waters and in green pastures. Wow. Uh, we can nibble the lovely green grass. He prepares a feast for us in the midst of our enemies. Yeah, in the midst of our enemies, he will prepare a feast for us. Hallelujah. We thank you for that, Lord. So he guides us through. We see uh, Jesus talking about in one of his 
parables, um, the father of the prodigal son. And when he gives that parable, Jesus is teaching us God's unconditional love. Hallelujah. So he's got a wayward son who goes off and, and blows all his money and, uh, and limps back expecting to be receiving a, a, a right dressing down and maybe rejection. But you know what? The father comes out running to him when he sees him in the distance and he puts his arms around him and he spares, gives him a special ring and a special robe and a, he makes a massive feast for him because he loves him so much and he's so glad that he's come back. Hallelujah. That is the father's love. But you know what? He's also got another son who is very self-righteous and says, hey, you know, this wastrel that's come back, why are you giving him a feast? You're never giving me a feast. You know, I'm the one that's been here all the time. I've done this and that. I've done everything that you've asked me to do. And the father says, well, you know, you never asked me. But he says, look, listen, son. He says, I'm always with you. And everything that belongs to me is yours. <laughs> wow, what a thing to say. And hopefully, you know what, the very first son, the way one, you know what, he, he got what the father's love was all about when he came back to him, because he was expecting retribution and rejection. And what he got was love. So he understood it. And I hope the self-righteous one also found that too, because it was offered to him. But you know what, you cannot... You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. So, um, yeah, we, we just hope that that um, self-righteous one also came to know his father's love. Because the Lord says to us, ask and it will be given to you. Hallelujah. Ask and it will be given to you. You know, God doesn't hold anything back from us, any good thing. And uh, we also know that it's the goodness of the Father that brings men to repentance. The goodness of God brings men to repentance. It's not by scaring them about hell, although they have to need to know about hell. That's an important thing. But it's the goodness of God that draws men to repentance. Hallelujah. And you know what? When I first met God, it was his goodness and his love that drew me to him and changed my life. You know what? God loves his creation so much. He's the father of all creation. John 3.16. We know this one off by heart. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever would believe in him would be granted eternal life. Wow. We know that the Lord uh, wishes that none should perish. And he is. Everything from God is free and available to anybody who would accept it. Psalm 63, 16 says. Oh, you, O oh Lord, are our father. You are our, our redeemer. From everlasting to everlasting. God is our redeemer. From everlasting to everlasting. You know what? This short life will be over soon. But there will be a, an everlasting life for us with the Father in heaven. Yeah. We all qualify for that. And it's not something that you're going to lose by tripping up and maybe doing a, a sin or something like that. No. You've been granted eternal life. And the blood of Jesus covers any sin that you might commit. And so we can thank him and rejoice in our salvation. Wow. And you know what? Our father is omniscient. Our father is omniscient. 
Heavenly Father is omniscient. Some people don't know what that means, but um, it means that he is all-knowing. He knows everything. You know, when I brushed my hair today, I might have lost a hair. He knew all about it. He knows the hairs that are on my head. He knows the hairs that are on your head. He knows everything about you. He knows your every thought. He is all-knowing. How he does it, it is a mystery. But you know what? It doesn't matter. We know that it's true. He is omnipotent. He is all-powerful. There is nobody more powerful than God. You know, some people think in the world that the devil and God are sort of equals, you know, half good, half bad. It is not true at all. The devil has nothing power-wise in comparison to God. Now, he has spiritual power against us. Yes. But because we've got the power and authority of God on our side, we can beat the devil every time. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So God is all-powerful. We don't have to worry about the devil. And he is also omnipresent. God is everywhere. Right? I mean, uh, David and said one of his psalms, even if I'm at the bottom of the sea, there you are with me. Even if I'm at the top of a mountain, there you are with me. Hallelujah. He's with us. And he will never leave us or forsake us. Wow, what a promise. And this is God we're talking about. God, our you know. Father. Yeah, our father in heaven. Uh, you know, not, uh, not the rich millionaire who lives next door. No, this is God. Wow, Ephesians 4, 6 says, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. Wow. In you all. And when he's saying you all, he's talking about us. And especially those who are born again. Because we've allowed him to come in. We've invited him in. And that makes all the difference. God can't get in and he will not override somebody's sovereign will if they do not invite him in. He will not impose himself upon anybody. And that is part of his holiness. Okay, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ephesians 3.15. For this reason, I bow my knee. And I'm not talking about taking the knee. You know, like you see these sportsmen doing and things like that. I, I'm not making a comment on that at all. But no, I bow my knee. Because I bow before the living God. It says, I bow my knee to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Amen. You know what you got? God's family that he created in heaven. Billions and billions and billions of angels and all, all sorts of creatures, wonderful creatures that he's created. And you have us here on earth. And because we are born again and we've given our lives and we've invited him into our lives. You know what? We are considered his children. We are considered his children. And so therefore, um, whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. We are part of that. Wow. And it says elsewhere that we were just, we're just passing through this world now. We are sojourners. We are just passing through this world. And our destination is in heaven. Amen. So it's us. We are the children of God. And you know, this great God of ours, and I've mentioned this so many times because it's so awesome. He's the one that owns all the Lego. You know, we've got heaven, which we don't know what it's made of, really. Well, it's spirit. 
but we know that this earth and the universe uh, the material universe is, is made up of building blocks it's made up of um, minute things like atoms and molecules but you know what we've got a god who designed those things in fact it says um, in christ all those things are held together, together. Mm -hmm. so he's designed all those things he's put them together and he's designed the whole of this earth using those building blocks mm -hmm. he's built it all himself and you know what he did it in love yeah. he did it in perfect love you know what he wanted to create a paradise and right at the beginning you know what he built the garden of eden that man would live there and you know it was god's training ground but the devil got in on the act man was warned and um he got deceived and and fell for a, a, a trick but um at the end of the day you know what what god created was perfect and created in love and you know what there is a time coming when that is all going to come back yeah, amen. when the devil is defeated god is going to sort everything out and there will be a new earth and a new heaven hallelujah and it's he's gonna then be the perfect father and he's going to be dealing with his children as he always wants to do that yeah in love and you know what my heavenly father when we get born again we're like newborn babies you know we don't really understand um the the bible and what it's saying but he take, takes us like toddlers you know newborn toddlers and um he will see us all the way through to adulthood hallelujah and you know we stumble and fall and we do things wrong but you know he picks us up he dusts us off and he points to his word and says do it that way next time and it will work out for you hallelujah god's got everything sorted out for us thank you and you know what he is the king of kings and he is the lord of lords and he is the father of fathers Amen. he's the father of fathers Amen. and today you know what we celebrate him today as the father of fathers because he's shown us the right way that we should do things and um, it's at our peril if we turn our backs on those things or we just become hearers and not doers so he's shown us the right things to do and when we put those into practice they work hallelujah mm -hmm. so I, I just want to exhort you to be good parents do it god's way you know because good parents produce good children but i've got to say that um whatever stage you are in in your spiritual walk you know you might have adult children already that weren't brought up in god's way because you didn't know god in those days oh, and you know you did your best and praise god for that but you know what whatever your situation is now with prayer and doing things god's way you can change any situation that might be have been become difficult or um you know, you, you might have alienated children, things like that. But if you put it before God, you know, he's going to help you bring those things back together again. Because you know what? He's the God of reconciliation and restoration. Amen. But you have to be patient sometimes because, you know what? When God does something, he has to take everyone into consideration. Mm. Everyone has to be taken into consideration and people's wills and their mind and all types of uh, very complicated and only god can do that sort of thing mm. but if you put your trust in him he will come through in the end mm -hmm. yeah so i just want to to thank the father right now mm. we can all just come before him and uh, and just really start to thank him lord we just thank, thank you 
for, for God you are. Yes, we just Father. thank you, Lord, for, you know, the, the wonderful traits yes. that you show, yes. how, um, how you help us to get born again, Amen. you know, by the, the blood and the cross through Jesus Christ, your son, mm. and how much you love us. We thank you for your intimacy. Because yeah. you say, if we draw close to you, you will draw close oh, to us. <laughs> so it's like a child sitting on his dad's lap or mum's lap. You know what? He wants that with us. He wants that intimacy. Wow. And I thank you, Lord, that you're our protector. You're our provider. You give us your peace. You give us your joy. Mm -hmm. We can receive that. You nurture us. You give us confidence in this life because we might have been without confidence, but with you, we can have confidence. And you are our role model. We look at Jesus and we see how we should be. And I thank you that you're a teacher. You teach us all things. You show us how we should react with other people in this world, how we should be honest how we should be patient and kind, how we should forgive people and, um, and be fair to people and just. We thank you, Lord, that you are the God of justice. You are fair, the fairest father. You are, are the one who does forgive us. We thank you that there's no hypocrisy in you because there is no shadow of turning we thank you that you're tolerant and you're sympathetic with us but we also appreciate your discipline and your correction because there are times when we need it and sometimes we need to be pruned that we might that we might be able to produce more fruit and i thank you lord for your guidance and advice that we can come to you and uh, we can ask, Lord, for your wisdom, and you will not withhold it from us. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord, that you show us about humility and faithfulness and about self-control and how we should be law-abiding and not rebellious. Yes, Lord, and you listen to us when we pray to you and you called us you call us a friend you know there is a, a time when we can go from being children to a friend of god when he sees us you know growing up in his ways and he says you know what i no longer call you a child but i call you a friend because you are becoming like me and I thank you, Lord, that you're always there for us. And you know what? You're willing to give your life for us. Mm -hmm. Because you did give your life for us. That we might be set free. So today we just celebrate your wonderful fatherhood. We praise you and we worship you. Mm -hmm. And we thank you for all the fathers in this world, Lord, that you are helping Thank to you, do Jesus. the things that they should be doing mm -hmm. and we just celebrate that today and we all said amen amen amen, amen. so i think now we're going to pray play a bit more music mm -hmm. and then denny is gonna give us something mm -hmm. i believe i'll so, just end it on the script the Lord. <laughs> Right, and Denny is going to um, uh, read something for us. So I'm going to hand you over to my darling wife. Yeah, hi everybody. Uh, just, um, I was reading this on 1 Peter, um, chapter 5, and I'll just take it from verse 8 to 10, but 10 is the one that's actually... 10 and 11 is the one that sort of stood out for me. And I don't know if this is for somebody out there, but it says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, be sober, be vigilant, because the adversary of the devil 
walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him. Stand steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. So no matter what you're going through, just imagine you're not the only one in the world going through it. We're all going through different things in our lives because the enemy is out there. And if you love the Lord, you should be expecting to be persecuted because as Jesus was, so will we be. Amen. And in verse 10, but may the God of all grace, who called us to his, his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. Now we've all been called, haven't we? After you have suffered a while. So the Lord is telling us here, you know, God is warning us, we will suffer in our walk on this earth. There is going to be times of suffering. It's not a perfect life. The perfection only comes through Christ Jesus in us and our walk with him. Amen. It's not in the world because there's no perfect world out there. Not yet. As Mark was saying, only when the father comes back and establishes Christ on earth. But it goes on to say, who has called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have suffered a while. Then there's a comma. He will perfect you, establish you, strengthen you, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. If you're going through things in life and it's hard, just keep reading that over and over from 8 to 11. So that's 1 Peter 5, 8 to 11. And just know you're not the only one in the world that's suffering. We all do in different areas. I am with my family in different ways at the moment. But we have to realize the enemy, we are the enemy's target. But we have a father up there who will give us the perfect life. He will establish us, strengthen us, and he will then settle you, which he's saying his love in our hearts will settle us with his peace. Amen. So just want to encourage you in that. I felt the Lord, you know, I opened the Bible and I really felt the Lord to share that. Um, stay strong. We all suffer we're on this world we're in this world until christ comes and raptures us all back up there all we have to do is know the father is for us not against us amen